see Sweet Ruka right there behind me. I just finished glassing up the rudder. We ground it out a little bit just to make sure uh, there weren't any cracks or anything major going on with that. It checked out really good. Uh, there was just a little bit of absolutely normal uh, cracks and some filler epoxy and we took care of those, refilled it, and actually strengthened them back up with a few extra layers of glass. So the rudder is super strong now. We just need to wait for it to cure and do a little more fairing. So now it's just a matter of finishing all the projects, cleaning things up and a little bit of paint, and then we can go back in the water. We are finally at the portion that we can start applying some paints, uh, but first we need to get our epoxy barrier coat in place. We're using here International Galvarette. Okay, he is mixed up pretty nicely, so we're gonna let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then we're gonna come back and apply it to the rudder. We've got our primer back on our rudder. So it actually is starting to look like a boat again. Before we finish up the repairs, we need to order some more supplies and our new core. To do that, we need to move a little bit of money around in our accounts in the United States. However, when we went to log into our banking accounts from Brazil, boom, we got blocked. That's when we decided to use Surfshark. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that keeps your online activity safe and private. Basically, you can change your IP address to have access to websites and streaming services that are otherwise blocked from your current location. After using Surfshark, I was able to log into my accounts and transfer money so we could successfully order the parts we need to continue on our repair and our journey towards Cape Horn. But besides this, Surfshark is useful for so many things. Since we're always moving and need to access the web in so many different places, like marinas and restaurants and Airbnbs, it becomes critically important to keep our web traffic encrypted, which helps us keep our personal data and our passwords safe and secure. Surfshark has helped us, so we think it will help you too. And right now, if you enter our promo code SSR for Sailing Sweet Ruka, you can get 83% off and three extra months free. Check out the link in the description below. All right, let's get back to our repairs. Let's do it. With the rudder already dropped, we decided we'd take apart the pedestal and inspect the rest of the steering system. Besides this, the pedestal and wheel needed some work, so we thought we'd get a start on them while waiting for supplies to arrive. Yeah. <laughs> we're finishing up some paintwork here to the pedestal. We removed those old uh, instruments that were there and we just had some holes covered with duct tape for quite a while. So while I was doing all the fiberglass work for the repairs down below, I figured, hey, might as well finish this up as well. I don't have the right tools on board for professional painting. So we're having these guys handle it. Most of the rest of the work today is kind of on hold because we're waiting for this and, and uh, it's hard for me to access any of my tools and, and whatnot. Plus, right back down there is where I need to get to uh, to get in and do some more sanding and prepare for installing the core. So I'm kind of stuck. So maybe I'll come back tonight and do a little bit more work and just relax a little bit more for today. Okay, 
needed a little beer break on a Saturday afternoon. We repainted the whole thing and now we're going to mount our B&G Zeus right down here where it used to be up here. So this will actually keep it out of the way of the main sheet if there is a crash jibe. When it was up here, uh, it was actually in the target zone for the main sheet and being our primary navigation station right here outside, uh, really this is our main you know, uh, focus point for uh, our charts and seeing where we're going and uh, knowing the depth, especially when we're navigating new waters or you know, constrained areas. So um, I think it's really important for us to have this here uh, at the helm and if it were to ever get damaged uh, offshore that would kind of be uh, quite the mess. Uh, we also use it as our autopilot control so you can hit the button here and then leave the helm and go forward. So for us it's pretty important and uh, we'll get this back here. We also moved our windlass controller. Uh, we have a second windlass controller back in the cockpit and then also foot pedals up front but that was also right here and we decided to put it over here. It actually makes it really easy now because we can operate the uh, engine and the windlass I can be in front of this traveler and in front of the wheel and now I can drop the anchor and be able to run forward when needed so uh, that should be able to help Kate out uh, up front a little bit uh, faster and easier. Okay so that is the update. I'm going to drink this beer and then we're going to throw in our compass and our Zeus. As they say here, halache, tranquilo, which means chill out. It's good. Cheers. With all of our materials ordered, it was time to seal the hole with the existing fiberglass we had on hand, as well as inspect the rudder and rudder bearings further. But first, Curtis scarfed the hole at an angle for the layers of fiberglass to grow in size and create a flush surface. He then used some filler from the inside while using plastic on the outside so it would not leak through the hull. Afterwards, Curtis sized and cut the layers of fiberglass, being sure to mark them with permanent marker so he could keep track of the position of each one. Finally, it was time to start applying the resin. Each piece of fiberglass was thoroughly coated with resin and applied from largest to smallest. Then everything was smoothed down to take out any air pockets. The final steps would be applying the peel ply and vacuum pump to remove any remaining air bubbles. All right, we've got our vacuum pump running here and we are finally getting this bottom layer of glass in. This will be our new outer hull and uh, then we'll put some new core in and everything like that afterward. But at least we're gonna get this new outer skin all laid up and in place. That way the boat can go back in the water if it has to because they're pretty short on time here in the yard. The rest of everything we can actually do from the inside of the boat once we finish the outside. So uh, we're gonna do that and then we'll continue on the rest. So for now, there's your repair. Okay. Okay, we've got our vacuum plastic off. Time to rip off this peel ply. Here we go. 
not too shabby here. Feels pretty good. Uh, let's go downstairs and take the bottom part of this off and get to sanding. Sanding was quite an interesting task, as Curtis used all battery-powered tools of which he had to charge off the boat's solar, since we did not have a transformer available to us. Curtis made his way to our new friend Gabriel's boat building shop, as that is where we had our core and other supplies shipped. Gabriel was also kind enough to share his expertise about the condition of our rudder. He gave Curtis a short class on how the rudder and shaft are constructed in his shop. So uh, the shaft will go right over here, and this is the bearing part. So before we, when it, before it put to sleep, uh, it goes with a... Uh, uh, a putty, like a shock putty, like a structural shock putty, so that's why you, you thought like it was not laminated or something, but it's, right. it's pretty... Uh, uh, Very good. Say? Yeah, pretty... You guys can tell this is not actual infusion but due to you know the time limits we have to be on the hard here and the rainfall amount that we've had and some other factors we can't actually do a true infusion we thought about it so that way it was exactly like the original scrimp this is pretty darn close 
so what we're kind of doing is, is manually infusing it here and then we're going to put a vacuum on this and we're going to pull out all the extra we're really going to suck this thing down so this right here is the next best thing so what you're seeing is the epoxy squeeze squeeze right on out of all these gaps the goal here is to get rid of any air air pockets and I think we're going to accomplish what we're after looks pretty good All right, we've got it out of the bag now, and it's time to take the peel ply off and see how this turned out. Fingers crossed, guys. Next week on Sailing Sweet Ruka, we finish up our remaining projects and we get back in the water. A special thank you to our patrons and sponsor Surf Shark for making this video possible. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time!